I'm Paul Shapiro with the Humane Society of the United States. For millennia, Jews have been known for a great many things. Our intelligence, our good looks, and add to that list, our compassion for animals. In my own upbringing, both in Hebrew school and at home, I was regularly reminded that we should treat others, especially those who are weaker and therefore more vulnerable than we are, with a sense of kindness and respect. Whether it was my mom reminding her perplexed and admittedly annoyed son that it was the Talmud and not her that required us to feed our animals before ourselves, or my Hebrew school teacher counseling us that when God gave humanity dominion over animals, he didn't license domination, but rather responsible stewardship. I've always known Judaism to be a faith that encourages concern for animal welfare. And of course, there are a multitude of examples in Jewish law illustrating a concern for the suffering of God's creatures. In Genesis, we read of God creating covenants not just with humanity, but covenants with the animals too. And we're reminded in Proverbs that the righteous man regards the life of his animals. In the Talmud, we're introduced to the critically important concept of Tsar Belechayim, the Jewish prohibition on causing animals to suffer. Tsar Belechayim really is a guiding principle in Jewish faith when it comes to what we should consider in our dealings with animals. In fact, in discussing the importance of this in the Talmud, we're told that the reason Moses was chosen to lead the Israelites was not because of his stature as a statesman or an orator or a warrior, but because he had shown such compassion to his sheep as a shepherd. Unfortunately, when measured against Moses' concern for his flock or against the scripture's laws regarding the treatment of animals with a basic sense of decency, I'm afraid that we don't often come out looking too good, especially in our treatment of the animals who we raise for food. Today, the overwhelming majority of farm animals who we raise and kill, including those sold as kosher, are treated in ways that are so hideous, that are so extreme, few of us would want to even bear witness to their suffering, let alone participate in causing it ourselves. Imagine permanently locking an animal inside of a cage so restrictive she can't barely even move an inch her entire life. This is the unfortunate reality, not just for one animal, but at this moment, it's a reality for hundreds of millions of farm animals in the United States. The Torah may say that we can't cut limbs off of live animals to eat, but we do routinely cut out their testicles with no pain relief. We inflict third degree burns on them with hot irons to display our ownership of them and more. These aren't isolated examples. They're not just a few rotten apples. We're talking about standard industry practices that are simply rotten. If anything were a violation of Tsar Belechayim, it's the abject and needless routine cruelty we inflict upon millions of farm animals in our country every single day. And it's not just the extreme overcrowding of animals or the unanesthetized surgeries we force upon them. We play God with these animals by manipulating them, for example, to grow at hyper-fast rates, which take a grave toll on them. Chickens used for meat, who normally could live for a decade, have been bred to grow so bulky, so fast, that by the end of their very abbreviated six-week lives, many of them have trouble walking more than a few pitiful steps without pain. We've bred turkeys to have such huge chests in order to maximize breast meat that they're incapable of even naturally mating anymore, and so we have to artificially inseminate them. The denial of these animals' basic natures, the natures with which they were created, seems to be among the grossest of our failings when it comes to Tsar Belechayim. Does anyone really believe that confining an animal to the point where she can't even turn around for months on end is compassionate, or somehow what a merciful God would intend? We have to ask ourselves the uncomfortable question, how much suffering are we willing to cause, especially to those who have never harmed us and pose no threat to us whatsoever. What crime have the birds and the cattle and other farm animals we raise for food committed to deserve such punishment? Is this really what we think is the most ethical course of action? None of us are called upon to be perfect. Leading a life that causes no pain to anyone else is simply not possible. But by paying others to commit cruelty, we would never countenance ourselves. Are we really contributing to making the world a better place, or at least reducing the negative impact that we have on the world? Fortunately, there's a growing movement aimed at building a more humane society. The animal protection movement is succeeding at passing new policies to require better treatment of farm animals, and an increasing number of Americans are cutting back on the number of animals who they're eating choosing more vegetarian meals instead. There's even a vegetarian Passover guide called the Haggadah for the Liberated Lamb. 
In short, we're slowly but surely moving in the right direction. A direction away from the attitude that causing others to suffer doesn't matter. A direction away from the attitude that we can do with animals whatever we please because we are stronger than they are. We're going toward a world where our relationship with our fellow creatures is one that's based less upon violence and domination and instead is based more upon compassion and mercy. The truly humane society that we are called on to build is one in which we make real Isaiah's prophecy in which the wolf lies down with the lamb. But in this case, it seems likely that we must recognize that we may ourselves be the wolf, and it's time for Jews to embrace our own faith's vision of a more peaceful and humane relationship, not just amongst ourselves, but with the rest of God's creation too.